Hello everybody! Hi! My name is Samantha Summers and welcome back Welcome back to another episode of Hive Swap Friendism and you know after our very first successful attempt at getting a friend I am so so feeling I'm feeling this one you know I don't know what I'm trying to say I don't know what I'm trying to say I feel good about this this feels like it's gonna be good it feels like it's gonna go great nothing bad is gonna happen whatsoever so now we are um what are we on we're on three we're on chapter th act three yes all right so we are on act three we are going to get into this because here we go volume three because I am feeling good all right putting one front putting one foot in front of the other you continue on through the strange alien world because one friend just wasn't good enough seriously though we could have been popular and we could have been like what high all the time I don't know I don't know we had a friend we had one we finally didn't botch someone's life you know we finally didn't kill someone we finally didn't kill ourselves all right just when you think stuff is beginning to make sense it all slips through your fingers and becomes even stranger and more alien there does however seem to be one thing that remains constant through the, all through all planets and walks of life that thing is friendship <clears throat> you are on the prowl for more it would have been perhaps wise to stay with one of your wonderful new friends until you were fully healed but as Martha Stewart says visitors like fish begin to smell after three days I don't like Martha Stewart you are almost positive Martha Stewart said that nevertheless you soldier on in your endless quest for friend for companionship where will your travels take you next let's find out oh my goodness I love them both oh I love them ah she's a bronze blood she's a I think she's like Kanaya Oh my goodness, I love them both. Skyla or Branya. Oh my goodness, I love them. What has she got? She's got fuchsia on though. She's got she's got some fuchsia. Is she like friends with the heiress or something? Ah. Huh. Cause generally when one and she's got blue. She's got this blue blue little little toothpicky thingy grass I don't know that could mean something generally I love her oh my goodness I love them both look at them oh, I love them I love them oh my goodness I want them both they are so cute oh I don't know who I want I love them both All right, I am gonna go with Branya. Branya. I'm probably saying that wrong. Cause look how cute she is. Oh my goodness, I love them both. I love them both. But this this fuchsia is really interesting. I don't know if it's actually gonna come into play or if it's just like, but yeah, they could have made it green. I'm gonna pick Branya. They could have made it green. Whoa, this is a cave. I'm not coming up on a cave. You've been traveling through a cave network for a while now. The wicked, the rigged stone is a welcome respite. Respite. The rigged stone is a welcome respite from the eerily organic infrastructure you've been encountering. You know, houses, houses is also proving an unwelcome respite from friend making. Maybe it was too much to hope for that this cavern would be home to another potential new buddy. People don't live in caves where you come from. Why would you think it was the same here? 
why. Maybe leaving the big city behind was a horrible mistake. Just maybe, these dark, cold tunnels are completely devoid of- Oh, hang on! There's a bunch of buildings in the distance. Aha! You're so cute! Oh! Hello! I thought you were one of my girls. But you don't look like a jade blood. Or anything else, actually. How strange. See, she... She's a jade blood. She's taking care of... Of... Mm, mother grubs, I think. She is, um, she's taking care of mother grubs who give birth to all the grubs. That's why she's in a cave. That makes sense. You convey your usual, usual spiel regarding your circumstances. You were lost and lonely and your ribs are still broken, you think. But you're just gonna have to wait that one out, okay? Honestly, the ribs are fine. You could just use another friend or two. I see. My first responsibility is to my jades and the mother grub, so I don't make any promises on friendship just yet. But you do look like you need someone to take care of you. <laughs> Here is the brooding caverns. We follow a few simple rules. Don't invite drama from up top down below. Protect the mother grub. We have no hierarchy but do what I say. Let's do everything we can to keep our current record of dozens of sweeps without any jades being called. Aw, oh, that's so good! I really hope I don't ruin all of this. You have no sure... You, you're not sure what half of those words mean, but you nod your head. Good! I'll take you to our hive. Follow me! Oh my goodness, she's so cute! You follow her into her hive which looks like a school, or some kind of dormitory, with multiple rooms and multiple floors. Hmm. Usually, more of my jades are around. I, sp I suppose that everyone is out watching the Imperial drones arrive with the fi- Filial- Filial- With the Filial Pals. Girls, we have a visitor to our caverns! Don't be alarmed by their bizarre appearance. They seem to be harmless and quite weak. Two, don't give them more injuries than they already have. <laughs> Aww. Our visitor des deserves a warm J blood welcome. She clasps her hands. No one else is around, but you stand to attention and give her a thumbs up to show that you read her loud and clear. To show that you read her loud and clear. You notice that she called you a visitor, and not a friend, but that's okay. You can do whatever it takes until you've upgraded from visitor to friend, or at least charity case. Ah, oh, look at all the babies. The babies. You follow her upstairs, and she stops at a big room on the second floor. When you step into it, you have to clap your hands over your mouth to keep from gagging at the revolting sight. There are big, baby-sized larva-looking things all over the floor, squirming around and crying, and inchworming out of kiddie pools of green slime. They're the babies! This is our nursery. Most of these wrigglers are sick or injured, so we look after them here until they're well enough to go back out into the caverns and spin their cocoons. She looks shifty all of a sudden, giving you some side eye like she's sizing you up. You try to look very non-threatening and also 100% trustworthy. That's me. That's me. I will, I will be very good. We keep this nursery on the down low. It's not against any laws, but it's, some, but it's, something, but it's something of a break with tradition to save any of the grubs instead of just letting them die. To tell you the truth, I'm not sure how we do it. I guess it just feels right to me to take care of them, the same way I take care of my jades. A nursery, huh? You look around, you look around again and see this with new information. You guess, you can kind of see how these wigglers, wrigglers, wigglers, wigglers, I had it right the first time. 
These wigglers look like babies. You can't believe that one of these things could grow up to be an alien that looks like Bronya. Again, she didn't tell you her name. This is an alien planet, so who knows? She takes you over to a shelf that seems to hold medical supplies. You're not sure what can be done for your broken ribs, but maybe she has some kind of alien technology that can help. But when she starts going through the cabinet, you don't see anything that looks high-tech like the thing that fixed your arm. Uh, I guess that most of what we have is stuff for Wigglers and I'm not familiar with your bizarre anatomy to know if it will help. But if you're not completely sure how to do something, it's best to try it anyway. Even if you fail, someone else can still learn from your mistake. Two. Maybe you won't fail. You never know. You're not sure about, about applying this eth ethos to your broken ribs, but she looks so determined, it might be rude to say no. Hmm. See, I don't know. It might be rude, but what if it kills me? What if it gives me extra arms or something? What if I somehow suplex her into the ground and break her neck? Okay. No thanks. Thanks, but no thanks. I'll heal my own... I'll heal on my own just fine. That's kind of true. Ribs, you just can't do anything. You just have to let them heal. So, thanks, but no thanks. Oh well, if you're sure. I'm worried about you, though. You seem like you need help. I wish I could help you more. If I can't take care, if I can't take care of someone, I'm not sure how we can even truly, ever truly be friends. Oh. I can get help other ways. Oh, I feel bad. You try to cheer her up, pointing out that friendship is a two-way street after all. She doesn't have to concern herself with your mutilated frame. How can you help her instead? Well, sure. There are things around here that I could use some assistance with. However, don't take this the wrong way. But we've only just met. I don't know that I can trust you to be as responsible as I am. Okay, trust me. I'm the most responsible, freakish alien you're ever gonna meet, okay? Let's get that straight right now. I am so responsible that your freakish little alien self don't even know what to do with it. Don't even know. I am all of those things. It's not easy to be the one in charge. You have to be conscientious, conscientious, considerate, and competent at all times. You're trying to think of times in your life where you've been conscientious, considerate, or competent. You're drawing a bit of a blank. I mean, I was... I was tasked with flying an alien ship. Well, it wasn't alien to me. It was, um... It was my ship. Wow. Somehow, I got a hold of a ship. They don't give those to just anybody. But just anybody crashes them. So, this is looking a little rough. A little rough. Um, you're drawing a bit of a blank. But hey, new planet, new you. You assure her that you have what it takes. I guess if you want to prove that you can be responsible, I can let you help me out today. It's a good time for a visit to the mother grub. You're careful to step around all the little grub, all the little guys on the floor as you head out of the nursery. She takes you back outside. These cabins are even bigger than you first realized. They're also dark and cold and gloomy. You can't see anywhere that might lead up to the planet's surface. Does she really live down here all the time? To make some conversation during this cold hike in a damp cave, you mention that living underground seems like seems kind of depressing. You realize too late this wasn't very tactful. She doesn't get angry at your gambit at your conversational gambit of insulting her home. Oh no, it's very peaceful down here. Well, in comparison to anywhere else, I quite enjoy it. The brooding caverns are a place for life and birth, not death. That's pretty, 
pretty uncommon on Alternia. You're still not sure what she means by brooding caverns, but you guess that it has something to do with the wigglers in the nursery. Before you can ask, you reach the top of a ridge and get to a wider view of the rest of this cavern. It's enormous, probably the size of a small city. All over the cave floor you see more wigglers crawling everywhere. Cocoons line the cave walls and the larger stalactites and the, the larger stalactites with some young trolls crawling out of them. Walking, flying, and crawling among the wigglers and young trolls are a variety of white monsters of all kinds and shapes and sizes. In the center of the cavern, there is, you don't even know how to describe it. It looks like a huge, many-legged queen bug of some kind, with a goat-shaped skull and horns coming out of her head. Her bulbous sphinxter, oh my goodness, ripples as she lays a continuous stream of hundreds of eggs from which you assume the gray wigglers will hatch. And marching through all this, you see several bulking bipedal creatures, each carrying two buckets, either to or away from the mother grub. I should not go down there. That looks really bad. Really bad. They looked armed, and they move like regiment regimented troops. Soldiers of some kind. You're instinctively terrified of them. This is where the magic happens. And by that, I mean the continuation of our species. Jay bloods like myself are entrusted with looking after this process, which of course is a very special job. The Imperial drones carry filial pails of genetic material to the mother grub for her slurry. She lays eggs that hatch new grub broods. After the wigglers emerge from their cocoons, the new trolls will go through the trials. Ooh. And the ones that make it will be selected by Eleusis to help care for them. Together, the young trolls and their luci go up to the surface together, where the trolls will go, grow up or get cold or whatever. As Bronya explains troll re reproduction to you, one of the Imperial drones veers sharply to the left, and in the process tramples over a few wrigglers and young trolls. The drone continues on, but several of the luci cry out, crowding around. Oh my goodness. The drone continues on, but several of the Lusai cry out, crowding around their dead or injured charges. Ooh. One of them, a gigantic beast that resembles a bison, bellows and rears up on its hind legs, hitting, uh, hitting one of the other Lusai with its front hoof. Oh, not again. This kind of damage control is a lot of what we have to deal with. Whenever Eleusis goes rogue out of grief or confusion, there's a potential for it to lash out at other Lucy, the Wrigglers, or the mother or the mother grub herself. Oh my goodness. We Jade Bloods cannot let that happen. She looks so concerned. A marked contrast to how confident she seemed before now. You offer to help her out earlier, and it seems like now's your chance. Someone has to stop that rogue Lucis. That someone could be you. Ooh. Oh man. I really feel like I should let her handle this because she is kind of like an expert. Ah, uh, if I fight the monster, save the day, I don't have this. Okay, I'm just good. Oh my goodness, I don't want to be a weenie. But this is her job, this is what she does, okay? This is not my job, this is not what I do. I'm gonna get people killed. Okay, okay, okay. Oh my goodness, be a weenie. You definitely do not like the idea of wading into a monster fight, not even to save the prognature of your new friend's species. In fact, you don't like that Bronya is so focused on protecting all this helpless toddlers and the distressed animals instead of taking care of you. What? What? You stammer out that you don't think you can take on any kind of monster right now. In fact, you just felt another stab of pain at your ribs. You might be blacking out. Ooh. Oh no. 
Oh, I was supposed to let her handle this. Now I'm being a punk. Bronya's concerned face turns, turns in your direction as he starts to swoon. She catches you before you hit the ground, and your heart flutters. You look up at her serious face, and she looks like such a mom, but also such a friend, like some sort of combination of these two concepts. Yikes, you don't look so good. I can't leave you alone when you're in such bad shape. Mm. Maybe I could carry you on my back while I try to stop the rampaging Lucis. Your heart flutters. Your heart flutters turn into print pricks of alarm. That sounds dangerous, mainly for you. You try to think of what you can say to dissuade her. Something other than I think you should ignore the helpless babies and mother in danger and mother in danger behind you in favor of continuing to hold me in your strong arms. But, but before you can speak, you hear a commotion behind her. She turns to look over her shoulder, and her face sags with relief. Yes, the other jades are here. They should know what to do. We've taken care of crises like this before. Of course, I'm usually, usually I'm there to help. As you crane your neck, you can just glimpse a crowd of trolls corralling the rogue looses away from the mother grub, while other trolls calm the remaining lucite and swoop up any wrigglers in harm's way. <sighs> I made the right choice. Oh my goodness, I was so scared. It looks like we needn't, needn't have worried. They're more than capable of stepping in when, I, when I'm otherwise occupied. I'm so proud. You take this opportunity to compliment her on what a good leader she must be to have trained the other trolls so well, super smooth. She beams at you and sets you down carefully on the cave floor kneeling at your side. This could have gone quite badly. I'm glad I didn't make the wrong choice when I stayed up to help you instead of rushing off. It just goes to show, sometimes the best thing you can do for the group is to take care of the weakest person in it. Well, you know. You kind of want to object to being called the weakest person, but you did just fake a fainting spell for attention. Yeah, when babies were in trouble. I'm kind of a terrible person. So maybe now isn't the best time. Instead, you thank her sincerely for sticking by your side. The two of you watch together as order is gradually restored to the chaos below, and even with your injuries, you feel close to content and quite hopeful about how this relationship is progressing. You notice that at your side, several wigglers are blindly squirming around, confused and crying. There's some young trolls here, here too, looking around all lost and bereft. You're not sure if their Lucis ran off with the others that got involved in the fracas, or if these little guys are orphans now. Now that you're seeing them out in the natural cavern light, these wrigglers look less like maggots to you. In fact, they're even kind of cute. You can see why Bronya would want to take care of them. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. One of the smallest wrigglers close to you has somehow flipped himself over on his back and seems unable to right himself. His little, little legs wavy in the air while he cries. Someone has to be careful with Trying to be careful with your ribs, you reach out, scoop him up, and cradle him to your chest, rocking him back and forth until his qui cries quiet down. Wow, you have a very strong nurturing instinct. I think he likes you. You almost look like you could be his Lucis, or a Jade Blood. You are pleased that she approves of your caretaking display. The regular's cough, cough breaks through your haze of smug satisfaction. When you look down, you realize he seems to be having some sort of trouble breathing. You point this out to Bronya. Good observation. You're really a natural at taking care of other creatures, aren't you? Some people find that nurturing ability to be very, to be very attractive in a potential friend. But as for the Wiggler, this is definitely not a good sign. I'm surprised none of the drones has noticed that he's sick. If we leave him here, he'll be cold for sure. Bronya takes the Wiggler from you. And you're more than happy to hand him over considering that you have no idea what to do with a sick baby that's not of your species. Also, your broken ribs make holding a baby kind of painful. 
You are being such a little wuss. Oh my goodness. Brony holds, holds the wiggler carefully, but with perfect ease. Just like you hope she'll cradle you. Cradle your new friendship in its infancy. Oh my goodness. Once Bronya feels assured that her jades have controlled the situation in the brooding cavern, have the situation at the brooding caverns under control, you both take the wiggler back to the jade blood nursery. You hover around uselessly while Bronya sets up some kind of crib filled with green slime. You're a little concerned when she takes the wiggler and submerges him under the slime because likely, because like he was already having trouble breathing. Surely drowning in slime won't help. The soaper should help strengthen his bellow sacs and soothe his sorrow shoot. When he gets healthy again, we'll take him back to the cavern and set him free to make his cocoon, make his cocoon and pupate. But he's so small, it's unlikely he'll survive the trials or be selected by Eleusis. You hate to see Bronya looking sad and try to be sympathetic, mentioning your astute observation that this whole system set up with the wrigglers and the trials and the culling seems pretty brutal. What? Oh no, I would never suggest. This is just the way the world works. And it's fine. It's fine. The trials are how young trolls prove that they're strong enough to survive. It's only right for the weak to be called. That's the purpose of Jade Bloods, to ensure the cons continuation of our species. On constant, and consequently, the hemospectrum. Oh my, what? Oh, I don't know what. Oh, wait. Whoop. Save. Okay, um. I don't know how I did that. <laughs> Oops. We are not revolutionaries, we're meant to do our jobs and keep our heads down, and keep things running smoothly. I would never presume to question the basic tenets of Alternian society that will bring negative attention from the high bloods. I just want to keep my jade safe. You look around at the nursery, and all these injured or underdeveloped wrigglers that Bronya was apparently supposed to let die, you think it might not be true that she doesn't question the way her world works. She's looking at you like she's scared you'll call her on it and expose her altruistic, altruistic tendencies. You try to salvage, the, salvage this conversation thread. Did she say that cul- Did you say that calling wigglers sound brutal? You meant natural! Yes, you feel 100% not neutral on this topic. Neither committed to the calling side of things nor eager to take up arms in revolution. Ah yes, neutral is how I feel about it as well. What a good word to describe exactly how I feel about all the controversial political subjects. Did I mention that keeping this nursery isn't technically illegal? Because it isn't, technically. There is no reason for any of Triss's drones to come investigating our hive. And if any of the drones do come knocking, we have nothing to hide. No borderline revolutionary ideas will be tolerated within these walls. Brunia laughs nervously and looks around the room like she's making sure that any Imperial drones hiding in here <laughs> that any Imperial drones hiding in here heard her announcement. You feel bad for how nervous she is. You didn't mean to freak her out. You tell her that she sounds super convincing. And why shouldn't she? She's clearly telling the truth. If you were an Imperial drone, you would definitely be satisfied right now with her clearly law-abiding and neutral ways. Thank you. That means a lot. <laughs> you cast about for something to change the subject, and mention that your ribs are feeling a bit better. Ronya's face brightens, and she lifts up your arms gently so she can touch the injured part of your torso, examine it, examining it in her typical responsible and authoritative way. You shiver, and wonder if her touch has healing properties. I'm glad to hear that. After all, I don't like it when my friends suffer. I've been elevated to friend! Yes! 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 Success! 
I have made two friends! And she's not dead yet. Well, technically I've made three friends, but one of them is dead. Dumped in a bush. Your heart leaps. You look up. You look up, scarcely allowing yourself to hope. Could it be? Or was she just making a general statement? If you're not in any more pain, hopefully that means your injuries will heal soon. I'll take care of you until then, my friend. You are overcome. Your eyes fill with tears. Bronya smiles at you and squeezes your hand. Ah! Perfect. Yes! I made a friend. My second friend. I did so well. Yes, I didn't even die that time. Oh my goodness. Victory! Victory! Huh. Oh, I did so good. Self-care comes first. Can I be the loosest to that little guy? Because cause I want to. Alright, well... Yeah! I knew I had a good feeling about this. I knew it! Oh my goodness, I knew it. Ah, oh, just... We did so good! Yes! We did so good. We did so good. And I am so proud of us. We did so good. <gasps> well, we didn't get any mention of why she's wearing fuchsia. Maybe... It's... I don't know. I don't know. But, we got ourselves a second alive friend and I could not be happier. Like, oh my goodness, she's so cute. I can't wait. I can't wait to do a third face. What's her name? Oh my goodness, I forgot already. I forgot the other ones already. I forgot her name already. Oh, I'm such a terrible friend. Oh well. Oh well. I've got Bronya. That's all that matters. Look at this beautiful friend. She's so fantastic. Look at her. So cute with her little friend, her little friend shape. Oh my goodness! Why do I look like a lump though? I look like I'm, look like I'm a, a college student who's just struggling through, through finals week. <laughs> like I, I successfully made myself surround them like victory, <laughs> and then I pass out on the floor. That's, that's gonna be my life. Wow. Look at those bags, though. She's right to be concerned. Look at her eyebrows. She looks so concerned. She's like, oh my goodness. She's the mom friend. She's the one who actually sleeps and studies and eats proper food in college. And then everyone else is just like, dead. Yeah. That's how it works. Well, with that said, I am going to cut this off here because I can do no further damage. So, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.